Welcome to episode 6 on my channel's journey to monetization. If you're new here, hello and thanks for stopping by. Because in this series I talk about my channel's journey from episode to episode, sharing what I've done since the last episode and what I plan to do in the future episodes in a week or two. So stay tuned because today I'm going to share you how awesome the last period was for my channel and I'm not just talking about the number of subscribers. Because the results are the best ones yet but they are not what you might expect and they really impressed me. So I've been quite busy since the last episode making several changes to my channel. First, I've changed the title of the video where I talk about the new test and compare feature because it was stuck under 100 views. For this I used vidIQ to help me with the title idea and to score the new title. Now the combination of the title and the thumbnail has a score close to 100 so if this video still doesn't get more views it might be because either the thumbnail or the video idea isn't interesting to people and I leave it as it is and focus on creating better content in the future. So if you need help optimizing your titles and thumbnails, VidIQ has a scoring tool based on a scale from 0 to 100. I highly recommend using VidIQ, so I'll leave a link in the description below. You can use either the free Chrome extension or get a 35 discount on one of the paid plans. Second, I changed the thumbnail of the trending video How YouTube Changed My Life with under 500 subscribers. I'm glad I did this because the previous thumbnail didn't resonate with my audience. I have invested a lot of time and effort into this video and the metrics reflect a big improvement in the YouTube studio backend. But the video is still not performing as I expected. I think the video idea isn't working anymore even if the vidIQ score relevance shows otherwise. Because other creators probably have much better audience retention metrics, so if you're thinking of making this exact video, I wouldn't exactly recommend it to do it today. Because the trend for this type of video seems to have ended, and with early adapters capitaling on most of the views today. Third, I changed all the thumbnails for my previous 5 videos in this series. I exported the best frames that I considered relevant to better resemble the video idea and I think it is much better than my previous thumbnails. I did this because the previous thumbnails were boring and didn't bring any more views after I published the latest video. And also because I received comments from members from small channel groups about the packaging of these videos. So I highly encourage you to find and join small groups of creators that can help you when you're stuck. And I also want to share an update on the results after changing all the titles that I mentioned in the previous episode in this series. Because the last episode started gaining a lot of attention and it is continuously getting views because YouTube has started to recommend this video. So if you missed the previous episode and want to see how I changed the titles, just go back and watch episode 5 after watching this one. Now on the tech side, I bought an external drive of 1TB to save my videos I've created so far because I'm getting a lot of low storage notifications on my Mac. So I'll move everything to this external hard drive and set it up as a backup for my Mac. Now regarding my workflow, I have reached out to two potential video editors because I want to outsource my video editing. One editor is from Germany and we had a nice 30 minute zoom call to see if we can work together in the future. I have sent him the A-roll and B-roll for a short edit which he agreed to do for free. And from that we will calculate the video editing based on the time he needed to edit this video. So after he completes the edit we'll agree on the fixed price for editing videos under 10 minutes and another price tier for videos edited between 10 and 20 minutes long. However, he went on a holiday, so the shots will be probably done for the next week. The other editor is local and I plan to work with him in the future, but he has a wedding coming up and he will be busy for the next month. I think it is good to have a backup for each task you outsource and never entirely rely on one person. Because life can be unpredictable and if you want to maintain the quality and the consistency of your videos, your viewer shouldn't not feel any interruption in the delivery. Of course I could have continued to do the editing myself, but I want to test this editor and start working with him as soon as possible. My aim is not to produce more videos, but to increase the video production quality and free up my time to rest, spend more time with my family and to stay more in the creator mode. I have concluded that video editing takes almost 50% of the time for making my YouTube videos. And comparing this with my daily pay from my regular job, the amount I have to pay for the editor is less than what I earn per day. So I think it's totally worth it to free up 8 hours of my week even if those hours are for rest. Sometimes I get so tired after weeks of work. 
Now regarding new videos, I have made one about CapCut where I show you how to remove the background of your talking head videos using CapCut. I did this video because I like CapCut and I wanted to start making searchable video tutorials around one of the popular video editing software I use. CapCut has a much wider audience than other editing tools so by making these types of videos I can help more people start their YouTube journey. And the free version of CapCut can do a lot and even the pro version is affordable. So I'll be doing more tutorials around CapCut in the future and if you want to check out the video, I'll leave you a link in the description below. Now regarding future content, I've started working on my next video where I'll show you how much I made with this channel when it was under 100 subscribers. Because I cannot stress enough how important it is to treat your channel as a business from the start. It is so motivating to see your bank account grow even when your subscriber count doesn't move so much. You can make more money with a small channel than larger channels by applying what I share with you in this video. So if you're curious about how to start earning money with a small YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button to get notified when I publish it next week. And also next week I will be publishing the YouTube short I sent over to test my new video editor. Now let's go to my computer and see the results from the last few days. Opening up the YouTube Studio desktop, I have selected the last 9 days. This is the period from my last episode until now. So in the last 9 days, I have published just one video and the other one is actually the previous episode in this series. For this, the channel gained 769 views, 16 watch time hours, and an amazing 21 subscribers. This is great because only a few months back, I was gaining less than 20 subscribers per month. And now let's go to my spreadsheet and dive into what actually happened and what other metrics have also improved. So this is episode 6, and the period I'm showing is from 3rd of August to the 11th, a total of 9 days. In this period, I have uploaded one long form video and zero shorts. So the channel got 23,881 impressions, much higher than the last period. But this is still not as much as between episodes 2 and 3, and it is because then I have uploaded 5 videos and now only just one. So this is very impressive. But to analyze the growth of your channel correctly, you should average out the metrics based on the number of days in each period, the same as I did with the subs per day column, where I track the average number of subscribers gained per day. I also added a column to track how my watch time is accumulated, because this is important in order to monetize this channel. And for this I need 4000 watch hours in the last 365 days. Now going back, the average view duration grew to 1 minute and 15 seconds, which is great, but I still need to improve to better connect with my audience. And this is actually one of the most important metrics that YouTube focuses on because the longer viewers stay and watch, the more chances YouTube has to show them ads and make money from advertisers. And if your channel is monetized, YouTube will share that revenue from these ads with you. Now going forward, the CTR went down a bit, likely because newer videos got a lot of views initially with low CTR affecting the channel's average, but it will improve because I have changed those thumbnails and the CTR is already higher on them. Now regarding subs, I want to welcome all 21 new subscribers and I'm happy I only lost 3 this time. The channel now has 140 subscribers, averaging 2.33 subscribers per day. This is my best period yet. Even if the number of views is lower, the conversion on those views is much higher. Now for watch time, the channel gained only 16 hours. And this might be because the recent videos are shorter. And to increase this, I will need to make both longer and more engaging videos in the future. Now looking at the watch time alone, it might seem like it didn't grow since the last period. That is why I added this last column to better compare it with previous results. And as you can see, the average actually increased for this metric as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope it brought you some value and a better understanding on what each metric means, how they work and how you can improve them. So if you found value in this video and want to see how this channel's journey developed, smash that subscribe button to get notified on my future uploads. And until next time, ciao!